Tonight, what the NSA wants with 200 million text messages a day. The Target hackers wrote code in Russian. Facebook's gone app crazy and breaking news. Driving while glassing is legal. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, show four for January 16, 2014. I'm Jason Howell. Let's get right to the tech feed. Let's waste no time. Think you get a lot of texts? Ha! The NSA gets a lot of texts. The Guardian newspaper today revealed an NSA program called Dishfire, which captures about 200 million text messages every day. The SMS messages are neither targeted nor complete, but collected as part of an aggressive harvesting of as many text messages as possible on a massive and global scale. Once collected, the NSA eliminates text messages to or from U.S.-based phone numbers so they're not searchable in the NSA's DishFire database. From these messages, the NSA can learn about people's travel plans, border crossings, contacts, financial transactions, and more, including of individuals under no suspicion of illegal activity, according to The Guardian. The Guardian's information comes from the Edward Snowden revelations. There are new details emerging from the Target malware attack, which exposed the account information of 70 million customers over the holidays. The Department of Homeland Security sent several retailers a confidential document stating the code was, quote, partially written in Russian, displayed and a highly a high degree of skill. Sorry about that. Apparently, the malicious code was not detected by multiple antivirus protocols. And I guess antivirus software does not speak Russian. That's what I gained from this. There is evidence that Target and Neiman Marcus Group may not be the only retailers involved in the hack. On top of this, Target executives will go before Congress early next month. Fun times. Sources tell The Verge that we can expect more standalone apps coming from Facebook this year. This is following on the success of Facebook's standalone chat app, Messenger, which you may have used, as well as Instagram, which Facebookers actually consider their standalone photo app. The company is planning to release even more apps outside of their core Facebook app. So what could we see? Zuckerberg actually recently said that he wants Facebook to be a personalized newspaper. So one could imagine a newspaper app that competes with the likes of Flipboard, Pulse, those kind of apps. Other possibilities could be a dedicated calendar app as well as search, which is pretty important. That could bring Facebook's graph search to mobile in a very powerful way. It's also worth noting that Facebook has failed with standalone apps in the past. Facebook Camera, Facebook Poke, they didn't take the world by storm, but they illustrate how standalone apps make the company more agile in the mobile world. Now, this is pretty important. Is wearable technology such as Google Glass safe to wear while driving a vehicle? In October of last year, Cecilia Abadi was pulled over for speeding and was issued a ticket. She was wearing glass at the time, and as such, the officer issued an additional citation for using a monitor while operating a motor vehicle. Well, today was Cecilia's day in court, and shortly before we went to air, Commissioner John Blair dismissed the citation with a verdict of not guilty because the California code she was cited for requires proof that the device was in operation. Now, it's too early to tell quite yet what the influence of this ruling will be on the future of wearable technology, but it definitely sets an early precedent. Consequently, she was also found not guilty for speeding. Go, Cecilia. Coming up, a 3D printer that can build a house in just one day. I really wish I could do that myself. The materials it uses and how it works coming up next. But first... Father Robert Balasser joins us to discuss vulnerabilities with our personal information. Thank you for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me back, Jason. Absolutely. Security expert David Kennedy told members of Congress today that the healthcare.gov site is actually riddled with security issues that have not been fixed in months. Also, Target and other retailers were recently attacked. So, Father Robert... Why can't these big organizations keep our information safe, huh? What are they doing wrong? That's a good question. There's, there's really two factors here. The first is that the reason why they have all this data is to use it. They want to share it. They want to monetize it in as many ways as possible. And that is usually contrary to trying to keep it secure. You can't keep it secure if you're sharing it with your entire enterprise or your entire government. The other problem is cost. It costs a lot to secure things, to do it properly. So a lot of these businesses use, say, like the RSS PCI compliance and say, I'm protected enough even right. if I know it can be hacked as long as it means I'm not financially obligated to pay out any penalties. Uh, is there anything we as consumers can do to kind of limit our own risk? We can really only address that second factor and, and by hitting them at the cost. If we now make it 
not not cost effective for them to just do our security willy nilly then we could actually have an effect if we were to say go to target go to neiman marcus and say we're not going to use your services we're not going to buy your products until you can guarantee that we have more security than what is simply mandated by the credit card processors then we could actually have an effect until then no it's going to be business as usual now i was actually at target earlier today and i used my debit card but i used it as a credit card thinking that that might protect me what do you, what do you think about that uh, not really all it does is it moves the risk down the line i mean okay. it, when you think about using your credit card if it gets violated if someone takes it if someone breaches the data and is able to use that card to purchase something you're not financially obli uh, obliged to pay that it, that is all on the credit card processor all on the credit card company the same thing happens with your debit card it's just moving the risk at a different place until we address the fact that they're using technologies that are not really designed to deal with right. the, secu the security threats we have right now, it, it's not really going to give you any added protection. Excellent. Well, Father Robert Balasar, thank you for learning us. Yeah, Appreciate it. That's what we do. Uh, is there anything 3D printing can't do? Researchers at the University of Southern California have created a giant 3D printer that can build a house in 24 hours and without construction workers. Instead, the house is printed using a process called contour crafting. The printer rolls along a huge platform on rails with computer-controlled nozzles precisely dispensing concrete layer on top of layer until a one- or two-story house exists man this is this sounds much easier than my process of buying a house uh let me tell you a lot less paperwork that's it for this edition of tech news tonight thank you for joining us if you haven't already don't forget to subscribe to this podcast at twit.tv slash tn2 our next newscast is tomorrow morning at 10 a.m pacific i'm jason howell good night bandwidth for tech news tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com